Welcome to Lab 7, Ocean Tides. Tides are the daily rise and fall of Earth's water along the shore. In this lab, you will learn that tides vary in magnitude and timing based on location. Tides are driven by the rotation of the Earth, ocean depths, continent locations, and the gravitational attractions among the Earth, Moon, and Sun. Tidal charts. Additionally, using tidal data measurements, you will learn how to work with tidal charts. Shown on this slide are example daily, monthly, and yearly tidal charts for Seattle, Washington. Later in this lab, you will learn how to read tidal charts, identify tidal patterns, and create your own tidal chart. The relationship between the sun, moon, earth, and tides. Earlier, we learned that tides are the daily rise and fall of Earth's water along the shore. These periodic variations in sea level directly correspond to changes in the relative position of the Earth, Moon, and Sun. The Sun's gravitational force is a primary force. However, on Earth, the gravitational for force of the Moon is twice that of the Sun. The following figures illustrate the tide producing action of the Sun Moon relationship. In Figure 1, as seen on the left, the Moon's position is in alignment with the Sun Earth plane. During this alignment, an accumulation of ocean water will occur on parts of the Earth directly toward and opposite the Moon. This is known as high tide. Simultaneously, this will create a depletion of ocean water elsewhere. This is known as low tide. The highest and lowest tides occur during this alignment. Next, as the moon rotates around the Earth in a relative counterclockwise direction, it will continue its pull of ocean water accordingly. As depicted in figure two, when the moon aligns at a right angle, perpendicular to the Sun-Earth gravitational plane, the gravitational forces will result in a, an accumulation or high tide and a depletion or low tide perpendicular to the Sun-Earth plane. However, notice that tidal minimums and maximums are not as extreme during this orientation. Daily tidal patterns. Daily, the average interval between high tides is 12 hours, 25 minutes. However, this is a global average and varies daily. For example, as shown here in the daily tidal chart for Seattle, Washington, we can measure the high tide interval over the course of a day. First, let's identify the high tides. Next, we'll calculate the time difference between high tides. This would be the difference between 2300 hours or 11 p.m. and 900 hours or 9 a.m. The high tide interval is approximately 14 hours. With a global average high tide of 12 hours and 25 minutes, this example illustrates how tide intervals change in both time and location each day. Next, regardless of location, we need to understand that there are two high tides and two low tides per day. As seen here are two high tides and two low tides. However, remember that this example illustrates a daily sample in Seattle, Washington. As the moon rotates around the earth, daily tide levels and times will change and will vary based on location. Lastly, tides ebb and flow. Ebb phases uh, designate a falling tide. Flow phases designate a rising tide. Spring and neap tides. Spring tides are high tides. Spring tides occur when the moon is aligned with the Sun-Earth gravitational plane. 
They occur both when the moon is in between and on opposite sides of this alignment. Therefore, spring tides follow the full and new moons. We will discuss moon phases later. Neap tides are low tides. Neap tides occur when the moon is aligned at a right angle to the sun earth gravitational plane. They occur both when the moon is below and above this alignment. Therefore, neap tides follow the first quarter and last quarter or third quarter moons. Next, we will discuss the phases of the moon and how each phase is directly linked to tides. Phases of the moon. In your lab, you will utilize the following figure to answer your lab questions related to moon phases and the related tides. Let's begin by learning the moon phases. However, first, it's important to understand that moon phases are neither related to eclipse nor the Earth's shadow being projected onto the moon. Moreover, the moon has no self-illumination. It is simply highly reflective. Each moon phase is the result of the sun's illumination, or lack thereof, coupled with our perspective as seen from Earth. The main moon phases. Let's begin with the new moon. The new moon appears when the moon is directly aligned between the Earth and the sun. The result is a dark moon. Moving counterclockwise, we see the first intermediate phase. This is called the crescent moon. A crescent is when the moon is less than one half illuminated. This is followed by the first quarter moon. This occurs when the moon is aligned at a right angle to the Earth's sun plane, and it is exactly one half illuminated. The last intermediate phase is called a gibbous moon. A gibbous is when the moon is more than one half, but less than fully illuminated. Finally, the full moon appears when it is directly aligned along the Earth, Sun Earth plane, but now it's on the opposite side. Hence, the moon is fully illuminated. The moon now enters into the second half of its intermediate phases. The moon is again defined as a gibbous, gibbous moon, but it's now illuminated, its illumination is inversed. The moon phase that follows is called the third or the last quarter moon. Again, its illumination is inversed. And the last intermediate moon phase is a crescent moon, again, with inversed illumination. Moon phases are further divided into two categories. Waxing, which essentially means growing, describes the moon phases that are increasing in illumination. Waning, which basically means shrinking, describes the moon phases that are decreasing in illumination. Moon phases and tides. Moon phases are directly linked to tidal regimes. Spring tides or high tides are associated with the new and full moons. Neap or low tides are associated with the first and third quarter moons. The lunar month. The lunar month is a cycle of time from full moon to full moon and is approximately 29.53 days. This differs from our Gregorian calendar, which averages 28 to 31 days. Thus, the full moon will appear at different times each month, although there is usually one full moon per month. A blue moon is the name given to a second full moon that occurs within the same calendar month. Question, if a new moon occurs on May 6th, then when would you expect to see the next full moon? Answer, approximately 15 days plus or minus one day. So it depends. The lunar month is 29.53 days. If you divide that by two, it equals 14.8 days, so this is a little less than 15 days. However, the printed calendar indicates 16 days, so a little more than 15 days. In general, it's safe to base your thinking off of a 30-day calendar month 
knowing that the moon will cycle through all of its phases during that time, plus or minus one day. Graphing tide charts. In part B of your lab, data given in the tide table, uh, given uh, data in a tide table, you will draw a graphical representation of the tides. An example is shown here. Specifically, in the data table above, you will find each tide's, <clears throat> excuse me, date, time, and tidal height measured in feet. And then you will uh, use the first, you will, sorry, you will specifically uh, begin with the first tide measurement. Then you will plot your first point relevant to height as seen along the y-axis and time along the x-axis. You will repeat this process for all of the given tide measurements. Finally, you will connect the points using a curved line as shown in the graph. In your lab, you will answer questions about tide height, tide times, whether tides are spring or neap, as well as their associated moon phases. Amphidromic systems. The rotation of the Earth creates gravitational forces called the Coriolis effect. These rotational forces deflect ocean tides into circular patterns called amphidromic systems. In the ocean's basins, tides in the northern hemisphere circulate northwards or counterclockwise. Tides in the southern hemisphere circulate southwards or clockwise. Next, we will discuss how amphidromic systems are created. The development of amphidromic circulation. The Coriolis effect creates gravitational forces which form rotational tides in the ocean's basins. A good analogy of this would be swirling a glass of water in a circular motion. High and low water levels are generated on opposite sides of the glass, while there is no change in water level in the center. Likewise, tides rotate around what are known as amphi amphidromic points. An amphidromic point, at this point, there is no change in sea level. However, daily and low tides propagate in a circular motion around the ocean basin. Each ocean basin contains a unique amphidromic system. This means that each coastline along the continents will experience different tidal levels at different times. For example, along the west coast of North America, an amphidromic system is rotating counterclockwise. Upon closer look, we can compare tidal charts for five locations along the west coast. By doing so, we can determine that high tides in San Diego arrive first. And as the amphidromic system rotates counterclockwise, high tides will progressively arrive in Point Reyes, California, Garibaldi, Oregon, Sitka, Alaska, and finally Kodiak, Alaska. Daily tidal regimes for amphidromic systems. Amphidromic systems create three primary tidal regimes. These tidal regimes indicate how many high and low tides will occur along a specific coastline over a 24 hour period. Semi-diurnal tidal regimes cycle through two nearly equal high tides and two nearly equal low tides per day. A mixed semi-diurnal tidal regime has two unequal high tides and two unequal low tides per day. And finally, a diurnal tidal regime has one high tide and one low tide per day. The San Diego tidal regime. As indicated by the map on the left, we have a mixed semi-diurnal tidal regime. Again, th this means that we experience two unequal high and two unequal low tides per day. However, remember tidal regimes vary by location. As illustrated in the map, the west coast of North America experiences mixed semi-diurnal tides, 
the east coast tides are, are semi diurnal <clears throat> excuse me diurnal tides occur along the gulf coast local tidal patterns in part d of your lab you will use local tidal charts from la jolla california that were measured from NOAA's tide gauge station at the end of Scripps Pier. The following graph from your lab shows tidal measurements from July 12th through July 14th, 2006. In this graph from your lab, data was graphed from the same location, but spans from June 25th through July 24th, 2006. Together, you will use these tide charts to answer various questions about tide regimes. Furthermore, you will look at tide levels, tide types, dates, and how they precisely correlate to moon phases. Additionally, as if you're the captain of a sailboat, you will utilize these tide charts to determine when it is safe or when it is too dangerous to sail your boat through a given area. For example, you own a small sailboat with a draft of 1.9 meters. The draft of a boat is the depth of the hull uh, that is beneath the surface. You were asked to sail through an area known to have rocks that lie just beneath the ocean's surface when the tidal level is at zero meters. This depth is highlighted by a green dashed line as seen on both tide charts. You will review tide levels to determine when it is safe or too dangerous to sail. In this example, tide levels indicate the following. When tides are higher than the draft of your sailboat, then sea levels are deep enough to sail safely. When tides are lower than the draft of your sailboat, then sea levels are too shallow to sail safely. Additionally, you'll need to take into consideration time of day and sufficient sunlight as well as the time required to transit safely across the entire area. Thank you for attending Lab 7, Ocean Tides. Please address your questions to your Lab TA.